producer Elise Labatt. Elise, good evening to you. What happens if Hi, North Don. Korea does retaliate? Well, no one knows right now, Don, what the North Koreans will do. Of course, they're very unpredictable. And, and the U.S. and South Korea, they are predicting some kind of response from North Korea. And, and the U.S. is um, obligated and said it will stand by South Korea as, as defense treaties uh, obligate. And the U.S. is saying North Korea is responsible for these provocations. And uh, South Korea has this right to ta undertake these exercises as part of its self-defense. But there are two schools of thought here, Dan. Don, on one hand, South Korea has a right to these exercises, and to, to stop them, to let a North Korea intimidate them, is going to send the wrong message that its belligerent behavior is, is working and that they're going to be rewarded for bad behavior. But on the other hand, there is a real concern right now mm -hmm. that North Korea will retaliate and that the South will be forced to respond. You know, Don, South Korea has enormous ex exercised enormous restraint over the last several months with the sinking of this uh, submarine earlier this year mm -hmm. and then with the shelling of this island last month. And, and what the U.S. is concerned about is that the South Korean government has been badly shaken. It's lost a lot of public support. And as Mike Chinoy said, they're concerned that there will be some provocation. North Korea will respond. And South Korea will be forced to retaliate. There's been a lot of hand-holding of South Korea right now, Don. Hey, so Elise, listen, we understand, and as I understand it, that China was the sticking point, if not the biggest sticking point to date, in reaching an agreement with the UN on some condemnation letter, a condemnation agreement. What is China's role in all of this? Well, China plays a key role, Don, because it has the most influence over North Korea, the closest relationship, gives North Korea a lot of aid, and we've seen a lot of Chinese officials and North Korean officials meeting over the last several months. The U.S. has been putting enormous pressure on China to put pressure on North Korea to cut out its antics, to cut its belligerent behavior, and, and take steps to move back towards the international community. And China has been really resistant to even criticize North Korea, as we've seen at the UN, to put any pressure on North Korea at all. And, and the U.S. has been very critical about China's role. We had a U.S. delegation out there last week, the Deputy Secretary of State and other U.S. officials, trying to put pressure on China, saying North Korea is destabilizing your region. You really need to get on board. We'll see what China will do at the UN tomorrow, Don. Elise Lavender, our senior State Department producer, we appreciate it this evening. And as you can imagine, the Pentagon is watching the situation very closely. I spoke with our Pentagon correspondent, Barbara Starr, just a short time ago, and I asked her what this means for the U.S. military. Clearly, the U.S. military hopes very strongly that there is no escalation of hostilities, there is no exchange of fire. The U.S. military would like to not be involved in any of this and not have any reason to be involved. So their goal has been to talk to the South Koreans, say, yes, you have the right to exercise, but let's not have anything spin out of control, and work the diplomatic side, the international diplomatic community with the North Koreans for the very same reason. What they talk about is that notion of military miscalculation. If something got started, what could happen? It could be a nightmare scenario, and nobody wants to see that. Nobody wants anything to start here. And certainly, with almost 30,000 troops in that area, it's a definite possibility, if this does ratchet up, that the U.S. and troops there could become involved in this. Uh, it, is, it is a possibility. It's the last course of action that the U.S. wants to see. And actually, it's pretty interesting. Over the last several years, the South Koreans and the South Korean military has taken on more and more responsibility for their national self-defense. There is that unshakable U.S. commitment to defend South Korea, uh, but, but the South Koreans have really tried to take on a lot of responsibility. They are the power now uh, at the DMZ, not the United States, uh, on the southern side of the DMZ. So they've really tried to, to take on more and more in recent years. The U.S. is there. There's plenty of U.S. backup military power in the region if it came to that. But again, that's what they're really hoping it doesn't come to, Don. Barbara Starr in Washington tonight. Thank you, Barbara. A lot of discussion, but no definitive agreement. That's the bottom line. After U.S. Ambassador Susan Rice and other members of the U.N. Security Council spent much of the day in emergency session discussing the precarious situation on the Korean Peninsula. 
Let's get more now from CNN senior United Nations correspondent Richard Roth. Richard, a lot of talk there at the UN, but no agreement. Uh, that's happened before, and when it comes to North Korea and that issue, uh, it'll probably happen again. Uh, according to one Western diplomat, uh, the uh, missing link is China in all this. China standing up for North Korea and not going along with any statement that would have condemned North Korea. It was the Russians that asked and demanded this meeting. They wanted it even Saturday. Uh, following the eight-hour session, the Russian ambassador to the United Nations, Vitaly Cherkin, said Russia would have liked to have had an envoy from the UN go to the peninsula to try to defuse tensions and to have a statement that would have at least urged calm and restraint. Uh, I like to think that uh, uh, this uh, uh, meeting of the Council uh, uh, will have an impact uh, on the situation. And uh, uh, before too long, we may find out in a most dramatic way or in a less dramatic way, uh, whether or not uh, this impact has been sufficient. I wish uh, it could be more of an impact uh, with the press statement of the President of the Council. The U.S. Ambassador Susan Rice, who happens to be the President of the Security Council for this month, said that it really wouldn't be productive to have a statement that just asked for calm without condemning North Korea for all of the troubles. I think it's unlikely that the gap will be bridged based on what I heard over the last eight hours, uh, where the vast majority of the Council was insisting on a clear-cut condemnation of the November 23rd attack by DPRK on the ROK, or willing to accept language to that effect, but there was not unanimity on that point. The Security Council may discuss this issue further on Monday, but unless there are significant changes in positions by key players, especially China, it's unlikely there would be any Security Council statement before any live testing drills by South Korea or any retaliation by North Korea. Don. Senior United Nations correspondent Richard Roth. Thank you, Richard. More Americans are going to travel for Christmas, and if you plan on buying everything in the song 12 Days of Christmas, well, you may be in for some sticker shock, to say the least. Getting down to business straight ahead.